Welcome back. Uh, in this video I want to give you just the bare bones minimum mathematics and tensor calculus you'll need to like understand what the objects in the equations we'll be looking at later are. So um, if, if you are a physics or mathematics student this will be embarrassingly basic for you and if you're not, if you're a high school student or a generally interested person then this, this may be uh, kind of off-putting uh, with all of these Greek letters and indices we'll be throwing around. So feel free to either skip this video or just kind of gloss over and get the main idea so you can kind of uh, apply the, the rough sketch of what I'm talking about to things later or uh, this is just a useful skill in general to try to to black box a presentation and get useful information out of it even if you don't understand all the details but anyway okay so um, how are we going to write down our metric and do manipulations of the metric in a way that is notationally simple and clean. So we're going to write vectors. We're going to start by write, uh, writing vectors with components that are labeled by a number. So, so if v is a vector, uh, so say v is a vector in the plane that, uh, you know, it, for example, points in, you know, one unit along the X direction and two units along the, the Y direction, then we'll write this with V1, superscript 1 means the first component, so that's 1, V2 equals 2, and and so on. Uh, well, that's all for that one, but you can imagine doing this for other vectors, and then we're going to write uh, matrices slash tensors, and uh, for the mathematically inclined Really, these are rank two tensors because vectors are also tensors. Uh, so with two indices, okay. So that's pretty simple. So uh, the metric that we saw before. So if we call it G, uh, say if G was this matrix that we saw before, which was the metric in the plane, then we'll write G one one. That means the first row and the first column is one. G one two equals 0, which is the same as g21 down here, and g22 is also 0. So um, these are all of the components, and then when we don't want to specify a particular component, so when we aren't specifying the specific components but talking about the object itself, like the vector or the metric, we will write the name of it, the letter, and then write Greek indices for the two, or uh, the one or two places where the numbers would go. So this would be like, we'll write the vector V as V with the Greek letter mu up top, or we'll write G with the Greek letter mu and then a nu up top. So that's just telling us that this is a vector. Mu could equal one, or mu could equal two, and those will give us different components. Likewise, with G, we could have mu equals 1 and nu equals 2, for example. That's one particular choice of the indices mu and nu, and that gives us 0. And by writing this, it's just reminding us of what kind of object it is. So that's all that means. And now we want to have a better notation for these sorts of sums that we were doing. So remember from the previous video that when we had, for example, um, ds squared, we wrote this as this matrix product, so dx, dy, and uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, and uh, this was dx, dy, like this. So if this matrix is g mu nu, and this matrix here, let's call this just v, v mu, for example. So this means, remember, so this means v1, the first component, is dx, v2, the second component is dy, and, and that's that's all that means. We're just putting a mu there. So we're going to write this in a more suggestive way, and this is called the Einstein summation notation. So we're going to define this guy as, this is our v, this is also v because it's the same vector, so this is also v mu. So we're going to write this as v with a mu downstairs, g mu nu upstairs, and then v with a nu downstairs. So this is kind of silly because we're just writing these three things that look like we're multiplying them together, but 
This is the, the beauty of the notation. So when an index is repeated, when this mu or nu is repeated, this means it's actually a sum. Sum. So this means that we're going to, for example, add up, if you're familiar with the sigma notation. So we add up when mu and nu equals 1 to 2, v mu g mu nu, v nu. So when you see two indices, the mu and the nu, the same, appearing in a certain term, then that means it's actually a sum over those indices. So let's, let's practice this. So if, um, for example, let's say, again, uh, g is this guy, the usual metric that we're used to, and say we have a, me a, a vector w that looks like um, 2, 3. So then g mu nu w mu. So that means that we're going to uh, repeat all of these mu indices and sum over them. So that means g1 nu w1 plus g2 nu w2. So this is, this is going to now be, there's one index left, a nu left, so this is going to be a vector. So when nu equals 1, that's the top component of this vector, then we have g11w1 plus g21w2. This is 0, and this is 1 times 2, so there's a 2 up here. And then when, when we have 2w2 two, two is the same, we have, uh, it'll be this thing. This term is 0, g22 two two is 1, times w2, which is 3. So we see that this has really just done the matrix multiplication. All this has done is done the, norm, the usual thing, where we take this row, dot it with this column, and this row and dot it with this column, and produce this new vector. So this index notation is just a convenient way for doing these matrix multiplications and dot products and things like that. And as one final thing I'm going to introduce, uh, so similarly, similarly, if we're taking derivatives, taking derivatives with respect to components of a vector, looks like, for example, if we want to take uh, derivatives with respect to uh, mu of v mu, so this is this is actually a sum of derivatives. It's a divergence. So this is del one v one plus del 2 v2. So v is this vector that looks like, for example, um, x plus 2y and uh, x times y, for example. Then del mu v mu. So del 1 means the first component, which is x. So this will be the derivative with respect to x of x plus 2y plus the derivative with respect to y of xy which is almost out of space, but that's 1 plus x is that derivative. So um, this, this notation gets some, takes some getting used to. Um, I've uh, implicitly here used that uh, the lower index is really using this, this g mu nu, but uh, this is kind of a, a detail that I don't want to get bogged down in. So what you need to know moving forward is that we're going to use these Greek indices like mu and nu. If you see two of them appearing in the same product, that actually means a sum over all of that index. So this is kind of the I reminds you of fractions canceling or something. You have something upstairs and something downstairs. So the mu's go away and we're kind of left with an object that only has one index, like a nu left. And we can take derivatives in this same way. So in the next video, we'll use this notation and develop the ideas more of, of curvature and then try to use this to understand a curved space-time.